The internet is a weird place. Trying to really immerse yourself narratively within that whole technological world is a real challenge. Cyberpunk approaches it through heavy stylization. Karen Anwai Lee's novel, The Maze of Transparencies, is heavily stylized too, but in her own way, drawing from poetry. But also in terms of content, she places us at this slight remove from the technology through this conceit of a fisco digital collapse. So now all that technology is gone, and you have people trying to cope. We follow Yang, who is a former data miner, as he goes around trying to meet these muses of happiness, trying to learn from them. And what I found is that though on the plot level, this is about trying to find meaning and somewhere to go after this total collapse, what the book itself is really showing is something approaching a way to live right now. But you can't look directly at the digital world as it exists. And so in the novel, information war wars have banned figurative language, but at the same time, there's a recognition that things stand for other things and you can't get outside of that. So what you need is this poetic insight that illuminates things and allows you to see through this maze. Otherwise, it's this confusing maze and you don't know how to navigate it, but what poetry does is it shines a light through this maze of transparencies, which is really the whole of reality, and so you can start to see through the maze and feel out some sense of where to go. Another key part of how Lee creates this remove, where we can see the weirdness of this tech world in the novel's somewhat alien weirdness, is that the narrator is this former data cloud looking in on Yang. There used to be this connection, but now it's a one-way. He can't communicate with her, but she's there piecing this all together into a story. And all this poetry stuff also has a religious sense. It's compared at one point to prayer, where we move away from our common sense of uh, understanding of the world and open ourselves up to a sense of things which is much fuller, in which you can see through things and really become aware of these connections which are so essential to being but are not really normally apprehensible through the senses. And so as this outside figure with something of a big data perspective, the narrator is also this translation angel, but we're warned not to wait for this angel to make everything transparent. One problem there is that data alone is not a soul or a story, and to infuse data with a soul to make a story she needs Yang's poetic spirit. And so then there's this back and forth relationship where Yang is going through these technological based muses of happiness, but then also this tech figure is drawing from Yang as a more uh, poetic muse. And so it's not actually that we need to reach this post fisco digital collapse point and remove ourselves wholly from this world of technology, but we need to carefully develop these relationships that really infuse meaning. The story was very bizarre and dreamlike but it's really the sort of text that is useful to think with. You have all this poetic and religious sense, and it creates a model for understanding. As Lee says of this poetic religious practice, in your light, we see the light. And so that's the goal. It's a relatively short book. It's not all encompassing, but it really got me thinking. And to look in then at just one point in the text, you have these debates around rights of memory and forgetting that were at the heart of the conflicts leading up to the collapse. So do we have a right to be forgotten? And as put another way at one point, do we have a right to forget our superfluous data? These rights are held up against another question, which is, don't memories constitute our identities? We're most focused in on two characters, the narrator and Yang, but there's also this attention toward a collective cultural memory and the tradition that passes through successive generation. So there's this idea of writing a handwritten text that can pass wisdom down without needing the now destroyed digital technology. And one thing Lee does well in developing this point is timing. We're at a point where you have this, what she calls pre-digerati, those who knew life pre-internet, pre-digital tech, and you have the digerati who grew up always having this technology present. And then there's a much smaller scale, but one which will grow through future generations. There's the post-digerati. But because you have the pre-digerati still around, you have this cultural memory that provides an approach toward post-digital continuance. The narrative would not work the same way if we were several generations in to the point where no one knew anything but the digital, or if it took place early enough such that no one had lived so fully immersed from birth. This sets up a wide range of people wanting to kill themselves for various reasons, including tech ones such as cloud bit withdrawals, or not knowing how to live without the constant chatter of chatbots, filling in silence and providing this constant social presence. 
But you also have other issues, and what connects, connects them all, according to the story, is a lack of vision for the future. They're in very specific circumstances on plot level, but this problem is also our own, and it becomes this poetic problem where we need that poetic spirit to provide us this visionary light that can carry us forward. In that light, these questions about forgetting or being forgotten fall away in favor of this idea of cultural memory. It seems so horrific to have all this superfluous data about oneself, but the real problem is less the individual record and more what's not there. It's not that the technology is capturing so much, it's that it's missing so much. That's the direction in which Karen on Wai Lee leaves us in the maze of transparencies. And in a parallel context, this is what the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead noticed that the poet William Wordsworth felt in regards to his era, that what had been left out was what was most important. This hits off what Whitehead calls the romantic reaction, and Lee's narrator situates herself as a blighted neo-romantic. So that's where we're going, and I like um, that Yang would encourage you to be more optimistic in terms of future happiness. A lot of good things are ahead, but I also encourage you to read this book if you haven't. As I said, it's very useful to think with, and was generally just a really interesting, pleasant read. Then go out there and work on illuminating that maze.